Alrighty then, corn children. Children of the corn, it is a fine day for mathematics. And we are going to be talking some more about functions, specifically function notation. Now, in the past, we said that a function was a little machine, and you would put numbers in and numbers come out. But there was a rule. If you put a number in, you cannot have two different numbers coming out. Every number that goes in is assigned one answer. So, for example, if I wanted to put a number into this machine, for example, like the number 6, and let's say as a result, 13 comes out. If this is a function, if I come back later in the day and I put 6 in again, it cannot give me a different answer when 6 is put in. 13 is assigned as the one solution. All right, now, we want to talk about, and we didn't do this in the past, what's happening inside the machine. So let's suppose I open up the box and I show you that inside is the function 2x plus 1. And you'll notice when I fill 6 in, it would be 2 times 6 plus 1, and we get 13. So I have told you what is happening inside of this machine. Everywhere we see an x, I turned it into a 6, 2 times 6 plus 1, 13. And we often say that the x's are the input variable and the y's are the output variable. Sometimes we even list these in a table. Yes, a table. 6 went in, 13 came out. And that would go with points on the graph. That would mean that the point 6, 13 is a point on the graph, the x, y ordered pair. Hey, that's great and everything. But what if I wanted to fill other numbers into this? I don't want to draw a big box and write the word function on it. I wonder if there is a notation, a way of writing, this is the function that I want to fill numbers into. And there is, and there is. Here's how it looks. If my function is the function multiply the number by 2 and add 1, and I want to fill numbers into this, Here's how we can write it so we don't have to draw a giant box. Are you ready? I'm going to name our function f. f for function. So I write an f. And I want to express that I want to fill things into this function. Here's the way we do that. Next to the f, we do the parentheses, and we put an x here. And X over here marks the spot where you can put numbers in. This notation is said out loud, f of x. That's how we would say it, f of x. And the notation means fill whatever is here into the f function. So check it out. Moments ago, I filled 6 into the machine. This notation, F parenthesis 6 parenthesis, means put 6 into the machine named F. This is our F machine. I've named it so. Here, I can write it right on here. This is the F machine, and I want to plug 6 in. This notation says everywhere you see an X, make it a 6. And we got the answer, 13. Yeah, yeah. Come back over here to our table. We can now relabel the table with x, y, or x, f of x. f of x is like the y coordinate, the answer that comes out. Hmm. Hmm. So 6 went in for x, and 13 equaled f of 6. Hmm. I know. I know. 
So let's check it out. I'm going to give you some other functions. This is especially handy if you have more than one function. If you have an f function or a g function or a q function and you want to fill numbers in, this notation tells you what to fill in and which function to use. Hmm. Yeah. All right, check this out. I'm going to give you a couple of functions and I'm going to name them different things. Are you ready? Good. Glad to hear it. Here we go. I'm going to tell you f of x, I'm going to give you a new one here, is x squared plus 1. Yeah, I am. And I'm also going to tell you a different function, g of x, so it is a function, you can fill things into it, but because it's going to be different than this one, it has a different name. It's like Frank and George. g of x is 2x minus 5. Yeah. So I give these to you. I'm handing these to you. I say, here's a function, I've named it f, here's a function, I've named it g, and I want you to fill things into them. Well, how will I know what to fill in, Mrs. Klein? I'm glad you asked. That's our function notation. Check it out. If I asked you to find f of 3. All right, here's what this notation means again. It means find the f function. Found it! And everywhere you see an x, make it a 3. So, if I fill 3 in here, it looks like that, and on the other side, I fill 3 in here. Yeah, f of 3. Everywhere you see an x, you turn it into a 3. So this side, the, what I tell you about is kind of the left side, and then you find the answer by filling 3 into the right side. Oh. And we math it up. 3 squared is 9. 9 plus 1 is 10. When you fill 3 into the F machine, 10 comes out. And if you wanted to look at a graph of F, I know that 310 is a point on the graph. Input, output, in, out. Hey, here's another fine question. What if I ask you to find G of negative 2? Now look at it. Am I going to fill negative 2 into this? No! No, don't be silly. It says use the g function. That's why we write this here. So that if I have more than one function, I know where I'm going to fill things in. It says go to the g function and turn the x's into negative 2. That's what this means. So here's my g function. Negative 2 gets filled in. says so right there. And so we do the work on the other side. On the other side, everywhere you see an x, you make it a negative 2. Now, I used parentheses because this is multiply. And if you put the little dot there, sometimes you don't notice it and you think you're supposed to subtract. So I use parentheses so it's very clear we're multiplying. And we do the math. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. Negative 4 minus 5 is negative 9. We filled negative 2 into the g function and out came negative 9. So I could write, let me just bring this side down, I could write that negative 2 comma negative 9 is a point not on the f graph, but on the g graph. Yeah, function notation. Outstanding. What if I wanted to fill one more thing in? I'm just going to put it right here. Find f of negative 3. Now again, we start by saying, well, which function are we working with? Are we working over here? No, this is George. This says use Frank, f function. So that means I need to look at the f function. And one of the fastest ways to do this is to remove the x and create a blank. Instead of x squared plus 1, I'm going to write blank squared plus 1. And this says, look at the notation. There's the negative 3 inside the parentheses. 
That means I put a negative 3 inside the parentheses where the x used to be. Yeah, so it's going to be negative 3 squared. Now, some of you may have left off the parentheses and, and wrote down... Now, don't write this down because it wouldn't be correct. Some of you may have written down negative 3 squared plus 1. Technically, this is not right because this says order of operations square just the 3 then multiply by the negative? Oh, that's not right. What is right is all of the negative 3. Both the negative and the 3 get squared, meaning negative 3 times negative 3. Careful, people. A negative times a negative is positive. Positive 9 plus 1. Yeah, we got 10 again. Negative 3 filled in is also 10. Yeah, crazy but fun. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is a summary of function notation. Enjoy!